MotoExotica.com. So what do we have for you guys this week? Um, you see a big, bright fire engine red truck behind me? No, it's not a Chevy. No, it's not a Ford. And it's not really a Dodge. But it is our, you know, our favorite in-house brand. It is International. International are our favorite trucks. And they're our favorite trucks for many, many reasons. We've been selling them for years. Um, if you guys stay tuned and look at our inventory, you know we love our International trucks. Um, behind me is a, a very special International, something that we've been really, really hunting hard for the past couple of years, are the four-door International Travelettes. Brief history real quick on International. If you like history, you like trucks, you like American um, industry, the International story is absolutely fascinating. I could talk about it for days and days, but I'll briefly go through it. Um, in the 1800s, uh, mid-1800s, the McCormick family was out of West Virginia. Uh, they basically were farmer inventors. They invented the first reaper, farm reaper. And uh, the reaper was a great invention because it, it really saved time in farming. But the problem with the reaper that the McCormick family was having was it didn't work really good in hills and mountains. So they moved to the flat farm fields of Illinois and Chicago, Missouri, Iowa, where it was a great place to, to sell their farm reaper. Um, they were pretty successful. It's a long story on its own. But at the turn of the century, about 1902, the famous uh, investor, financial man, J.P. Morgan, really liked uh, the idea of, of, of the McCormick's uh, Reaper and their other farm equipment. Um, J.P. had an idea to buy a couple other small Midwestern farm agriculture equipment companies, merge them all together in 1903, and that's how we get International Harvester. And they were ahead of their time with a lot of things in the pickup trucks. Probably the biggest thing that they've ever done, way ahead of their time, is they, they decided to do the first crew cab pickup truck in 1956. It was the first truck that you could actually fit four or five adults in the truck. And uh, two doors in the front, one door in the back, so you can get out one side, kind of like an early Suburban. And all the way to 1961 was the first year that International decided to do, add the fourth door to the back. So 1961 is really the first year that ever a full crew cab pickup truck was offered for sale to the public. Being ahead of the time isn't always, uh, isn't always the best thing. Um, when these four-door trucks came out in the 60s, they couldn't sell these trucks. The American people just did not see a purpose to have a four-door truck. You know, they did not take their families in them. Uh, they're using them from work, so a two-door, single-cab, regular pickup truck was really enough for most of the American public. Um, International did have trouble selling these trucks, so they end up selling a lot of these to contractors, the government contracts, and also to the railroad. The railroad bought a lot of four-door travelettes. Um, the Air Force also bought a lot of four-door travelettes, but privately not many of these trucks were sold because the market just was not there whatsoever. Um, so International struggled, also struggled with other sales in their, in their tractors and scouts and pickup trucks all the way through the 70s and 80s, but that's a whole other story. Uh, but they had a difficulty selling these all the way through for the couple decades that they made them. Um, so what ended up happening is, you know, we fast forward to 2018, and what's the biggest thing in the pickup truck, truck market right now? Our four-door pickup trucks. They're just not as cool as these internationals. They don't got the style, they don't got the look, and I think their number one reason why is because this truck from the ground up was designed to be a real four-door truck. You want a vintage truck, you got a family, your international four-door is really your only choice. So everyone's fighting for these trucks when they come in this condition. They never last. This is the fourth one I've had this year. Each one sells immediately as I get it up. I do have three more incoming, so if you do see this video and you're looking for one, please give us a call. It has been converted and converted professionally with a 12 valve 5.9 Cummings diesel engine. This motor, when it was put in, um, had about 90,000 miles on it. If you don't know a little bit about International and Cummings, for a couple of years, International actually casted the Cummings engine for, uh, for Chrysler, for Dodge. 
And this is one of those, the, the particular gentleman I, who built this truck went out and made sure he found one of those casted international Cummings motors. And that is what's in here. So this 5.9 is a great addition to this truck. It gives it the power it needs. It also gives it the fuel economy that's actually pretty surprising for a truck this large. A couple other really neat things as you look around this motor is it's got the Hydro Boost braking system. Fantastic system for a truck this large. So we have disc brakes put in the front and we got the Hydro, hydro Boost system working with it. This truck is big and it brakes excellent for the size. You can drive this thing down the highway at 75 miles an hour. It's got the long wheelbase. And if you need to do emergency braking, it's going to do a pretty darn good job for a vintage truck. So always nice to have a little safety. I really want this truck to go to somebody who's actually going to use this with their family, drive it down the road, do some exploring. And the gentleman that I purchased this truck from really went through all the, all those little things. So as we got this great converted motor over here, we got the Hydro Boost braking system. Um, we also have a couple other little cool things. Um, I do have an air conditioning system, full air conditioning system included with this truck. I do have the hard to find Cummings AC bracket that fits for the, put the compressor on. Um, I have everything. I have a real international under dash um, air conditioning unit. It just needs to be installed. Um, this Cumming engine is mated to the Gitrag 5 speed transmission. It was recently rebuilt by a gentleman um, up in Chicago who is known for building these transmissions for internationals. It's an international country up in, up in Chicago. Um, so the transmission shifts really, really good. It really works well um, with this whole setup. Um, anyone who buys this truck is really going to be happy with the performance. Um, as we step back, we'll kind of look at some other things on this truck or what makes it really cool. This truck did leave the factory as a two-wheel drive truck. <clears throat> Today it is a four-wheel drive truck and it was converted to four-wheel drive using all international four-wheel drive components. Everything. So it's just as good as a real factory um, international 4x4 system. I'm all about trucks with taste and style. And the very first thing I noticed about this truck, what really made it, is if you look at these wheels here, these are custom wheels. They're 10 inches wide, um, made very nicely. But the best part of it is the, uh, the wheel designer welded a correct international hubcap in this. And, and also a real international beauty ring. These wheels look great. They're body matched with the paint. They look great. And uh, it really goes with uh, you know, the 60s correct look. Uh, but we still are able to have a nice suspension lift on this. Also have a large mud tire because, uh, again, we're 10 inches wide. So you have a lot of options of, of tires that you could run on this truck. And again, it goes with the style of this truck. It doesn't have the black bro wheels with the stupid star in the middle, anything like that. This thing is nothing but style. It's nothing but good taste. And there's going to be nothing on the road, anything like this rolling around you. So definitely wanted to show that. A couple other things is obviously the paint of this truck is gorgeous. Um, the gentleman I bought it had a painter who really knew what he was doing. He spent a lot of money getting this big truck painted. Um, it's a lot of surface area. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of work to get this truck to really look the way it looks. And really check out the photos and you can really see how nice the paint is. Let's just show you the interior real quick. It's really nice. The interior is freshly done. It matches the inside and the out. Um, I really like, it's got an Italian steering wheel, but if you know old internationals, if you've ever seen an international from the 30s, they have a steering wheel that looks a lot like this. And so it's a nice little uh, taste and style that the, the builder, builder added in this truck. Um, also, I love the shift knobs in this truck. They're really, really neat. Um, they match great. The dash is uh, the way it should. It does come with a retro stereo where you can plug your iPod, iPod in and listen to whatever music you want. Um, but it's definitely a pretty large step in there, but it's a roomy front cab. But the most important part of this travel act, especially a vintage truck, is it's got a very roomy four-door crew cab. Now, there's a, common, um, there's a common modification to do in these four doors. We've had quite a bit of these over the years. I've seen a couple. When you have the stock seat, it's actually a pretty big seat because International at the time just threw in, I think, another bench seat from a Scout or another pickup truck. So a tall person would get back here. The seat was quite further up. And if you got tall legs like I can, 
you really can't fit too well in there. So one of the big modifications to travel at is find like a 90s extended cab pickup truck, like an S10 or a Ranger, and uh, take the back jump seat and use it as a jump seat as the rear seat in these travelettes. They fit really perfect. This gives plenty of uh, leg room. I can actually show you guys real quick <clears throat> that I have, I'm six foot three, and I have plenty of room for this truck. So get your friends, your mom and dad, your kids, whoever you can fit in the back of this truck. Um, definitely makes it one of the hottest thing on the market today. I know only four doors, four door truck. It's a big deal. Uh, back here, uh, this is a nice match for the Cummings is this is about, I think a 37 gallon take back here. Um, it is a tall truck. I'm tall myself and I still can't reach the filler head. So down here, I keep this locks right here. Use it as a step, twist that up, and here's your gas tank. You got a little storage over here. This is where your diesel comes here. Again, it's almost 40 gallons that fits in here. This truck, I personally have put about 400 miles on this truck. Yeah, I can't stop driving, it's so fun. Um, and I gotta say, the previous owner that I bought it from, he noted that you're gonna get about 21, 22 miles a gallon in this big truck. That's huge. So if you actually want a big truck to take on vacation, load the kids, put the boat on the back. It's got the long wheelbase. You could really drive this truck far comfortably. And not only that, get some pretty good gas mileage. Now rounding the back is the famous international tailgate. Why is it famous? Because you know it's famous if you ever have to replace one. These international tail tailgates are very hard to find. They're actually, first of all, they're beautiful. I mean, is there, does Chevy or Ford have a tailgate like this? No, not at all. Absolutely gorgeous piece of, uh, piece of a truck, no doubt about it. This one folds down nice. These are hard to find. A lot of these trucks rusted away. Uh, a lot of the tailgates, these trucks, internationals got used. They were work trucks, so they got banged up. Tailgates got banged up like no other. So finding a really good tailgate for such truck is really, really hard. This one's got a great one. Uh, the previous owner during restoration did a great job. Well, I hope you really liked our little 1967 International Travelette. Yeah, I know it's not too little, quite a big truck actually. Uh, just wanted to show you guys a couple really new, neat key features, not only on this truck, but the actual Travelette in general. Um, again, I really hope the people that, the buyer that's looking at this truck wants to go out and use it, has a family, has some kids, has some friends, has a couple things to pull. And you really want to take this thing on the highway and go do some exploring or even do a, do a little work in it, this truck is for you. In particular, I want to talk to you Chevy and your Ford and you Dodge, Dodge guys. I know a lot of you guys stick to your brands, especially when it comes to pickup trucks. A lot of people I find with the internationals, they just don't know much about them. I really want to talk to anyone that's looking for a vintage truck out there right now to really consider an international. Even if you don't know much about it, be open-minded, give us a call. I'd love to talk about the history and everything about this fantastic American company. Um, they really made some of the best trucks because the only thing they did was make trucks along with their tractors. Um, but come in town, take this thing for a drive. I guarantee you've never driven a vintage truck like this and you would be very happy. But act fast because these things do not last on the market very long. They're very hot, they're extremely hot because they are a true four-door vintage truck that looks absolutely amazing and you'll be the only one on the road that has a truck like this.